What is up guys, Andy Forestine Runner here. Welcome back to another video. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Nike Streak Fly and comparing it to the other speed shoes in my rotation. So the great news is the confirmed release for the Nike Streak Flies is indeed March time. So not long to wait now for a bigger release of these shoes in the new Fast Pack colorway. I did share a photo on Instagram of that the other day. It is looking really nice. And what I thought I would do is sit down. Now I've got four or five runs in this shoe. Sit down and go through and compare this thing to the other speed shoes in my rotation. Because of course, I'm sure you guys have seen a fair few reviews of this thing by now. I've shared my thoughts. Lots of other people have shared theirs. Some love it, some don't. I'm gonna give you my standpoint and then show you how it stacks up against some of the other shoes, where I'm using this and where I'm not. Because to be perfectly honest with you, I am loving this shoe right now. It is working really well for me. But of course, I've got other speed shoes in there, so we're gonna stack them up against each other. And you can see if it may or may not work for you and be poised for that main release later in March. If you're excited for today, guys, make sure you give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content, and we'll start with this thing. So don't worry, I'm not gonna go over the technical stuff of this shoe. I've covered that in my first impressions video. If you're new to the channel, you can head back on and check that out. I wanna give you an idea as to how I've been using this shoe so that when I talk about the next batch of shoes, you can see where they stack up against each other. If you are new to the channel, I tend to train uh, for races anywhere between sort of like 5k through to the marathon. I don't ever really do anything much shorter than 5k and to be honest with you, I don't really enjoy 5k's anyway. I love things from like 5 miles onwards. 5k, uh, 5 miles and 10k is kind of the shortest distance that I really enjoy and then half marathons is my favourite distance and marathons is just something I'm drawn to. I kind of enjoy the training, I hate racing them, but that's my kind of area of racing. And so with that, I tend to do a couple of different styles of training. That tends to be a shorter, sharper block where I'm doing more VO2 max, critical velocity style intervals, top end stuff. And then I might do a marathon block or a half marathon block where I'm doing more maybe 10K half marathon and marathon pace work. And obviously we've got different shoes for different purposes. Now this is billed as a 5K and 10K racer. I gave an idea the other day in a video comparing this up to the Vaporfly. But to be honest with you, I wouldn't choose this thing over a Vaporfly for a race but I have found it to be top of the pecking order when it comes to a workout shoe. It is absolutely perfect for me, not for everyone, but for me. So for me, if I'm looking at training, I'm looking at using this thing in that shorter end block. Certainly not something that if I was gonna go out and do like six by 2K, seven by 2K, or like four by 5K, or whatever it might be, those longer marathon reps, this isn't a shoe that I would reach for. I think the softness and the cushion in this shoe is so good over the shorter distance, but I think it would kind of wear me down over time. I need something with a little bit more firmness, something like the Brooks Hyperion Tempo. That's what I enjoy when I'm going over those longer marathon pace intervals. Don't get me wrong, I love the soft cushion in this thing and I find it great on the shorter, sharper workouts. Um, but I don't find myself or I can't envisage myself using it for anything much longer. I haven't taken it longer than 10 miles at the moment. So that's kind of where I'm capping this shoe. It feels good up to that point. It could probably go a bit further. It's not something I'd ever want to take on like a, a 13, 14, 15 mile workout for marathon paces. So that's where I stand with this shoe. So let's start with comparing the Street Fly to a couple of shoes that it has kind of knocked off their purchase. The Skechers Razor Excess and the Puma Liberate Nitro. Both of these shoes I really, really enjoy. And I will also give a shout out to the New Balance Rebel version two, and I'll explain why that's not in this video. Well, that got retired a long time ago. I'll tell you why shortly, but these two shoes, love them for those VO2 max and critical velocity style intervals, that top end threshold stuff. These are super lightweight, super comfy, both very different style midsoles, much firmer in this one, much, much softer in this one. But I tended to gravitate towards both of these shoes kind of equally. I love them both and it really just did depend on the day as to which one I decided to pick up. I love the Liberate because you just feel like you have to do all the work and you feel really satisfied. You kind of, times, times don't go out the window in this shoe, you can still run really fast in it, but it really much is a case of there's nothing in this shoe that's gonna aid you in your gait cycle. There's no, no rocker, there's no plate, there's nothing. Similar to the Skechers, although you've got like a curve at the end, so it does feel like it helps you through your gait cycle. There's no plate in this thing, so it really is all just all about the midsole foam. As I said, firmer in this one, 
softer in this one. And of course the Rebel V2, uh, softer again, probably, probably just edges the streak fly in terms of softness. I found the Rebel almost too soft when my ankles were rolling in and I had to retire that shoe after around about 125 miles um, just because it's, I started to get shin pains and ankle pains when running in them. And I think that's where the streak fly has kind of been clever with that midfoot shank. If you can imagine, uh, if you're not 100% sure what that is, if you imagine that a carbon plate runs from top to the end here. If you cut these two sections off here and you just left a chunk here, you've just kind of got this shank or plate, whatever you want to call it, in the middle here, just to stabilize things up a little bit. So it does feel really good. And I'll show you exactly where it is. You ready? If I bend there, there, that's where it stops at that point. So you can see it goes, plate goes up to there. Um, and I can't do it on the other end because it doesn't quite work. Oh yes, I can, there you go. So it's in and around that area there. And it just gives that softer foam a bit more stabilization and I've noticed it stopped my ankles rolling in a bit. So I'm getting that beautiful plushness that ZoomX offers, but without the fear of my ankles rolling in because it's too soft, unlike the Rebel, which is why that one had to go. So these two kind of made the cut, the Rebel didn't. This is slightly firmer than the Rebel, and so my ankles felt good in it. Similar with this one, this is really firm, so my ankles felt really good in it. And these two shoes are both similar. So for me personally, if you enjoy the Liberate and you enjoy the softness of it, and I think you're going to enjoy the Street Fly. If you enjoy the firmness of this shoe, the Street Fly is completely the other end of the spectrum. Uh, and that really then depends on whether you prefer a firmer midsole or a softer midsole. But both these two shoes, again, using them for that shorter, sharper work, wouldn't really consider either of them in a marathon training block, but certainly in a 5K, 10K, or perhaps even half block. Then we'll move on to the Magic Speed. I actually have around about similar mileage in this shoe as I do the Street Fly at the moment. And I really do enjoy this shoe. This is a good shoe. And actually, this is quite a strong competitor. Out of all of the shoes I have, I feel like this one stacks up against the Streak Fly the closest, um, albeit the fact that the midsole foam in this thing is a lot firmer and it does have a four foot carbon plate, so from around about here to here to help you smooth through that gait cycle. It's not a full length one, but it's that front. And what I feel in this shoe is I feel this thing really keeps me on my toes. And the Streak Fly does that to me too. Somehow, I think it's that midfoot shank just helping you kind of, I, th uh, I think if you're a heel striker, in the streak fly, I'm not 100% sure how it's gonna work. I'm not sure if that shank is gonna aid or hinder you. Comments down below. I noticed 40 Runs has done a video and I watched it. He's a bit, uh, I think he said he used to heel strike, he's now a midfoot striker, but it really hurts his calves because it keeps you on your toes. And I agree with the streak fly. I do find that I run on my toes in that shoe. And similarly, this one as well, with the forefoot plate, if you're landing midfoot, I really find you get a massive benefit from the roll off. Again, not sure how you would feel if you were heel striking it, but I'm a, I'm a midfoot striker usually. When I get a bit sloppy and a bit tired at the end of a race, I do sink back into my hips and sometimes land on the outside edge of my heel and roll through. But 90% of the time, I am midfoot and I roll through. And I do feel like this is a really good competitor to the Streak Fly. I mean, weight wise, this thing's a heck of a lot lighter. This is a heck of a lot softer, but I do find myself going fast in the shoe. I see this as a little bit of a next percent endorphin pro kind of feeling. Sink and bounce, pop and roll, or like roll and pop, sorry. Uh, firmer midsole like the endorphin pro. I mean, the endorphin pro is still soft, but it's a heck of a lot firmer than what it is in the Zoom X, uh, in the Vaporfly. So I kind of feel like these are a good competitor. For me though, I wouldn't probably use this so much on the 5K stuff and I probably, this would be a good mishmash between 10K half marathon and marathon training. I wouldn't wanna to do too many long intervals in this shoe just because the foam is quite hard and I think my legs would feel quite beaten up, but it can handle, the stack height is there. It's a decent stack height. There's a good amount of cushion in there and I feel like it can handle those longer workouts. The Brooks Hyperion Tempo is still top of that chart for me, but I feel like this would do a relatively similar job. And finally, the last one I want to pit it against is the Endorphin Speeds. Now, this is the Run Shield version. I'm kind of going to more talk about the normal version, which I've already retired. Got to 350-ish miles in that one. That got retired. Um, I don't quite feel the same in this shoe as I do about the original Speeds, but in terms of the Speeds, again, what I had was a bit of a battle back last year with the Speeds and the Hyperion Tempo. And the Hyperion Tempo 1, I used that shoe for all of my marathon training. The Speeds didn't really get a look in, but the Speeds are such a great shoe. Now, in terms of where I train with the speeds. Again, like the Magic Speeds, I probably wouldn't consider them 
that much for the VO2 max shorter distance stuff. I do prefer lighter, snappier trainers. I really do consider that this is a great shoe and the Endorphin lineup is a great sort of lineup for that more half marathon to marathon training. So these are kind of the other end of the spectrum to something like the Liberate Nitro or the Skechers Razor Excess. I just feel like this is where I would use it at the other end. And so where there's a bit of an overlap with this shoe is I feel like that eight to 12 mile workout range, they kind of come up against each other, but then this thing can go over and past. And I've done plenty of long runs in, in the original speeds, 20 plus milers. Uh, I've done a couple of long runs in this one already, two hour long runs, wouldn't consider that in this shoe. So in terms of how they stack up head to head, I feel like they cross over nicely in the middle. I feel like, let's say, I don't know, three, four, five minute intervals, uh, that sort of range is where these things kind of clash. Uh, anything over that and you would lean to something like this, anything under that and you would lean to something like this. So again, although there is that bit of a gap above and below, they do kind of cross over in the middle. So if you have any of those shoes that I've talked about, hopefully you'll be able to put a bit of a relation in terms of how the street fly might stack up against those and whether it's gonna fit in for your training or even your racing. Because I know some people have raced in them and really enjoy them. Just for me, I just feel like the Vaporfly is more aggressive. I get more from the Vaporfly and I feel like it's a better shoe for racing. But as I said, I feel like Nike for me have really won with this shoe. I think there was a lot of hype around it. I think a lot of people are slightly disappointed, but I feel like it's going to become a shoe of choice for a lot of people's workouts and as I said that March release is coming soon so have a really good think about I like I feel the price point is really fair on this as well I paid 135 pounds for this shoe which if you think about something like this I think I paid like 160 or 65 for the run shield version the normal version is like 150 I think this one when I originally came out was more like 110 120 it's now about 80 pounds you can get it for and I think this thing again was around 110 20 but again you can now get for 70 ish and certain places and the magic speed uh, I think the magic speed is like 140 so in terms of price ranges this thing is relatively good value for money, which is really pleasing to say, because Nike produce the very top end racing shoes, don't they? And I think to produce something like this, strip back, uh, but still got that ZoomX magic for me, I think it's a win for me to slot into my shoe rotation. And I hope that helps. I hope that gives you some kind of idea as to where I'd use it for. I think it's a great middle, for me as a 5K up to marathon, I think it sits really nicely at the bottom end from that 5K up to half marathon training. I wouldn't take it into the marathon realm, but I feel like that first section or most of that section, this thing covers all bases for me. But there we go. Let me know in the comments below if you are excited for the launch of the Streak Flight in March. The colors look amazing. I'm really excited and I can't wait to put more miles in these and give you an update when I get to in and around that 100 mile mark. That's it from me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly run content. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Until then.